Good evening to our OCC followers. This is an Oz Cyclone Chasers National Cyclone Update today, the 2nd of March 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo, and this update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Looking at the latest infrared imagery from the bsch.com.au website, we can see here that we have a lot of convective activity occurring around the Northern Territory. Now, that's all associated with a fairly broad, low-pressure region that is moving fairly rapidly westwards. This could become Australia's next tropical cyclone. We'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Across Queensland, northern inland parts of Queensland, the Gulf Country, seeing some fairly good shower and thunderstorm activity as well. And as we mentioned in our previous national update, a lot of convective activity occurring across WA, and that's all in association with a very active trough system. Over to the Coral Sea, not much happening just yet. It's across the Northern Territory that we need to be focusing our attention at the moment as we see a tropical low, very, very weak system. There is a very broad and weak circulatory pattern here on the radar. Now that is all going to move westwards off the coast and into the Timor Sea tomorrow. You can see, thanks to Weather Zone, looking at the latest GFS forecast model, the system lying in the northern on the northern coast of the, of NT. Now that was this morning. As of tomorrow morning, the system is expected to travel west and be located by about 9:30 a.m. tomorrow morning, NT time, west of Darwin. And then as we get to the 48-hour period, it continues to track west. It's just a very broad area of low pressure, so it's not expected to deepen any time soon. And there's only one computer model that deepens this fairly quickly, but all of the major computer models push this westward slowly and just gradually deepen it. And by the time we get to the seven-day period next Monday, we have a situation where we do have a reasonable-looking tropical low, but it is located a long way west of WA. The only computer model that throws a spanner in the works is the Access Regional model, which develops this system offshore tomorrow. Uh, or pushes it offshore tomorrow and then really rapidly develops it on Wednesday. And you can see here Wednesday morning it is starting to deepen out here in the Timor Sea. And then tracks into the southeast Indian Ocean and becomes a tropical cyclone by Thursday. Look, we don't expect this scenario to happen. There are a lot of things going against this system in the next 24 to 48 hours as it tracks offshore. But certainly in the longer term, there are computer model guidance, or there is computer model guidance, that... We do have a little bit of faith in that is starting to show the potential for this to become a cyclone, probably around about the 30% mark at this stage, so that's a low to moderate potential of it becoming a cyclone at some point in the next 7 to 10 days. Alrighty, so here we're looking at the European Ensemble. Now this is courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, we can see here that the Euro Ensemble is expecting the system to be located offshore tomorrow morning. And then as we go to 48 hours, still remaining very, very weak off the far northern coast of the Kimberley. Then it drifts westward, still remains very weak. And then as we get out to day four and day five, we see the system continuing to remain quite weak as it heads offshore. Now by around about day six, Sorry, not so much day six, by, by day eight is what I was trying to say. By about day eight, we see that the European model is predicting a tropical low in this area. Now, the Euro is also predicting a fairly big difference in where that system could lie and also a fairly dramatic difference in intensity of that system at the time. So we do have the situation where the Euro is expecting the low to lie here off the coast of the Pilbara, much closer to the coast than most of the other computer models, yet there is a very large area of variance in that in terms of both where the system could lie, which is anywhere in this circled area, uh, or and or how strong the system is at the time. So you can see here, it's pretty fruitless to be going out past day eight at the moment, but there are some guidances that do show a coastal crossing of a tropical cyclone on the Pilbara coastline, but they are few and far between. Alrighty, let's shift our focus now on the eastern seaboard. And what we're looking for here is a new tropical low and eventually a tropical cyclone to form in the far northeastern Coral Sea or the southwest Pacific. We're not exactly sure at this stage. Looks more likely to be the southwest Pacific and then tracking west into the far eastern parts of the Coral Sea. Now, if we have a look here as we get to day five, we can see not too much happening. We do have a little trough system here over inland parts of Queensland. But as we head to days 6 and 7, as we go to day 6, 
you can have a look here. We do start to see this blue shading. This blue shading shows us a fairly big departure from the mean or the normal standard pressure at the time. So whenever we see these large deep blue shadings, we see the potential here of at least some of the computer models showing some very intense tropical low or tropical cyclone activity forming. Now, as we go to day seven, sure enough, the ensemble computer modeling is predicting a tropical cyclone to be located out here in the Solomon Islands. By day eight, that tropical cyclone is starting to push in a southwesterly direction or continuing to push in a southwesterly direction. By day nine is where we come into a lot of issues. We have a fairly strong high pressure system down here in the Tasman. We have a tropical cyclone located in the far eastern coral sea. Now, by all rights, that should be moving west towards the coast. And normally in that sort of situation, big high down here, tropical cyclone here, we would expect it to be going bang straight into the Queensland coast. But... Even though we have a fairly strong ridging in the surface to mid-levels, as we get into the middle to upper levels, we don't see too much in the way of ridging. And what we in fact have is a fairly strong mid-level high pressure system out here near Fiji. Now what that will do is it, instead of trying to track the system west towards Queensland, it'll try its best to try and track it, to, uh, try and move it in a southwest to south-southwest direction, which means that the system should remain somewhere out here in the Eastern Coral Sea, at least in, in terms of its mid-level steering. Now what is the issue here? is the fact that computer models are absolutely useless at picking upper level ridging at a long lead time. So therefore, if this upper level ridge moves a little bit further to the south and, and is located, say, in this area here, so if we have the upper level ridge there instead of where it is up here, uh, we will then see the situation where, no doubt about it, the system will track west and whack into the Queensland coast. So that is the area of doubt at the moment. We don't have much doubt that there will be a cyclone out there. It's just a matter of where exactly will it go. Will it track towards Queensland or will it track southeast into the graveyard eventually? We're not quite sure at this stage. The favoured area is obviously that southeast would track, especially if the high pressure ridge here in the, sorry, the upper level anti-cyclone develops out here, uh, we would see a track more to the south and eventually the mid-level westerlies from the Mid latitudes will eventually track the system away to the southeast and into the graveyard. By the graveyard, folks, I'm talking about, uh, for those of you that aren't cyclonically inclined, the graveyard is this region here where the system just ends up coming. Uh, this is the traditional track. It come this way and then they end up dying out here somewhere. So that is the normal traditional track of tropical cyclones that develop way out where this one will do. Will do. But just remember, if that high does develop a little bit further to the south, that thing is going straight bang into the Queensland coast. Not a thing in the world to stop it. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. Still a fair way away. So early indication, folks, are that this is going to be a significant tropical cyclone in the eastern Coral Sea or the southwest Pacific or even as it goes towards the Queensland coast. As I said, we're not sure exactly which of those options it's going to take yet. Obviously, the favoured option is that it's going to remain in the far eastern Coral Sea. And you can see some of these numbers here, 49, 47, 45. So we're talking Cat 4 cyclone. And we're seeing some of the numbers around the Queensland coast getting up to nine, getting down to about 960, which is a high Cat 3, uh, low Cat 4 possibility cyclone there onto the coast as well. So there are certainly signs that this could be a westward tracker into Queensland, but the favoured scenario at this stage is that the system will remain in the far eastern Coral Sea and will become quite an intense tropical cyclone. So as I said, at this stage, computer models looking at perhaps a Cat 4 and obviously in that situation, you wouldn't rule out further intensification being in the warm waters of the eastern Coral Sea. Tomorrow's rainfall, pretty obvious where it's going to be tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, that low off the coast of Darwin is going to create a fair bit of rain. Now, most of that rain will remain offshore, but don't, ex don't be surprised if you do get some heavy rain as that system pushes offshore overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Continuation of fairly scattered showers and storms across the Pilbara, Kimberley, inland parts of WA. As we go to Wednesday, we see that that low continues to track out here to the west. We continue to see fairly uh, fairly good falls of, of showers and storms here in WA. We see a big decrease in rainfall across the NT and just some isolated coastal showers on Queensland's coast. On Thursday, we continue to see that isolated shower activity on the north coast of Queensland. And uh, we continue to watch this low pressure system as it drifts offshore over WA. Some of the uh, showers and storms across the interior parts of WA start to ease off. However, we do see a greater potential of some of those showers and storms getting into the more populated northwest coast. 
as we go to Friday, uh, we'll see that tropical low continuing to track to the west. Now, some of the computer models start to stall it at around about Friday or Saturday and then start to track it southwards. And obviously, we'll need to watch that. Torres Strait looking quite active at the moment on Friday, uh, as is parts of the north coast of the Territory, but that remains to be seen. There's a little bit of a trough system here uh, that is expected to re-intensify, or intensify, I should say, and uh, we're not quite sure if that's going to happen just yet. Across WA, we continue to see showers and storms and pretty dry for most of Queensland, just some isolated convective showers here on the coastal ranges. Thanks for watching this update, folks, and if you'd like to support what we do, you can become an Oz Cyclone Chasers iWall subscriber by heading to our website at ozcyclonechasers.com.au slash subscribe. That will ensure that you'll get the best information cyclone-wise, like our subscribers, for instance, knew about this Coral Sea Cyclone oh, over a week ago now. They've been know knowing that it's coming. So stuff like that, you'll get heads up way before anyone else does. And not only that, you'll get front row seats to all of our chases as well. Thanks for watching this update. If there is a reason to update you tomorrow night, I will. Otherwise, our next update will be on Thursday night. In the meantime, we'll keep an eye on what's happening off the coast of the NT and Northern WA, and we'll also keep an eye on what will happen in the Coral Sea in about a week's time. Enjoy your night.